This? This is what I would normally vlog with. But this, this is what I wish I could vlog with. I think. I don't know, I haven't tried it out, but that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so the Canon M50 has been my go-to vlogging camera for the last couple of months because it checks all of the boxes for vlogging that you need. It's got a selfie screen, it's got great autofocus, it's got a mic input jack, it's got digital image stabilization, it's got good quality 1080p video, plus it does 4K time lapses, and it, it's really easy to customize, and there's lots of great, great things about it, but the thing that has kind of left me wanting a little bit, and this is more of a want and, and not a need, especially for everyday vlogging, but for what we're doing, I want to have more of a cinematic look where the background is blurrier and whatever you're focused on is, is in focus. And because the lens on it is f4 to 5.6 and it's a smaller crop sensor, you aren't getting that separation from the background like this where the background is blurry. You're, you're not gonna get that same level on this with this kind of ultra wide vlogging lens. And Canon right now for the mirror system doesn't have a ton of lenses, so there's no options. Like Sony, you can get the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, that absolutely does it, not quite as wide as I want it to be. Um, but yeah, doesn't blur the background in the way that I want it. And kind of the byproduct of that with having slower lens and a smaller sensor is that the low light performance on this is just not quite where I want it to be. That once you start pushing up over ISO 1600, it starts getting pretty grainy and the colors really get smushed. And again, that's not what I would say a big deal for uh, everyday vlogging because you can still tell stories through that and the story will carry it. The problem that we have is there are times where we are creating videos where we are getting paid to do those videos and we wanna be able to create videos and we have created videos for some fairly large brands. And so I wanna bring the best possible quality to it that when people see it, they don't go like, ugh, that footage was really grainy. They go, man, that whole thing looked cinematic and amazing. So this is still an incredible camera for everyday vlogging, but I was thinking in my mind, if I wanted to take it up a notch, have better low light, give it a more overall cinematic feel, how would I do that? And the answer that came to me is right here, courtesy of uh, Don's photo. Where did I put the bag? Uh, I just have to shut them out. I didn't buy this camera, they just let me borrow it, so thank you, Don's photo, I wrecked your bag. Um, anyway, thank you guys. But this, this is what I have that we are going to try out today in a real world scenario is maybe the mo one of the most controversial cameras, it seems, Canon EOS 6D Mark II. Um, People love this camera and people hate this camera. And I think that's the uh, sign of a great thing because if nobody hates you, nobody loves you. Um, but for vlogging, it checks the boxes, which are fairly simple to check, is it is a full frame camera with a flip out selfie screen. And for me, that is a must. I don't enjoy vlogging without a selfie screen because you can't frame up your shots. You can't see if the background's too bright and your face is in focus. It takes way more time to set up your shots and to make sure you're in frame. And it is just a gigantic pain when you are filming yourself. So selfie screen is a must, but nobody else, come on Sony, give us a flip out screen that we can see ourselves on with a full frame or even your amazing crop sensor cameras, but you don't, you don't do that. So this is the option for full frame vlogging and it's really the only one. And you know, you still got high quality 1080p video, it's got digital image stabilization, it's a full frame camera. So photos and blurry backgrounds, all sorts of things, amazing. But I thought, what do I pair with this camera to try and get good low light cinematic shots? And that means that you, typically want something like an f 2.8 lens uh, because that aperture lets in a ton of light and blurs the background but I also want image stabilization and it seems like every manufacturer out there makes an f4 image stabilized but their f 2.8 versions are not image stabilized except for one lens manufacturer and that's this right here the tamron 15 to 35 millimeter f 2.8 vc that's their vibration control their image stabilized system and so this is going to shoot at f 2.8 but it's also image stabilized so when you're walking and talking and running and gunning it's adding in that smoothness that also pairs up well with cinematic now this has digital image stabilization 
but digital image stabilization is never as good as real in-body image stabilization or in-lens stabilization. But it's handy and you can even put them together to try and smooth things out. But this combo, I think, I don't know, could be wild and amazing. The unknowns for me right now are really around the focusing between these two. This has dual pixel autofocus, but this is a bit of an older lens and it doesn't have like a smooth stepping motor. It has their, I don't know, they say it's ultra quiet motor, but that doesn't mean that it's quiet enough that the, the microphone won't pick it up. So I'm curious how fast does it focus and how quietly does it focus? And then overall this package, how good does it look? Does it give that cinematic feel? The problem with this combo is that this thing is two and a half pounds. And that's more than this entire combo just in the lens. And then this thing is like, I don't know, a pound and a half or basically I did the math on it with the tripod and the mic and these two combos, you're at about four and a half pounds or about just over two kilograms. So. It is huge, it is hefty, and is it worth it? Well, that's a question, but just as a side note, a lot of people are vlogging with the 1DX Mark II from Canon, and that plus the 16 to 35, either F4 stabilized or F2.8, is heavier than this combo, so side note. But anyway, I'm gonna build this together, we're gonna put it together, and uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. Okay, let's try a cool transition, here we go. Ready? <laughs> wow, look at this thing! It is... So big it is blocking my light, especially compared to the M50, insane. But we're gonna take this, we're gonna go vlog, vlog in the real world, but oh, hefty, all right. This thing, um, well, it's solid. Greg, check this thing out. Hey, low light test, here we go. It looks like the eye of a T-Rex. <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely blurring you away from the background, which is nice. You're in a pretty dark spot here. All right, this is an ISO 2500, and uh, how, how do you think you look? Well, oh, I probably look terrible. I have lip cap on. Okay, here we go. ISO 6400. I see a little bit of grain. Colors are so-so, but definitely better. Um, something to take note of here is that if I was on my other camera, I would probably have to be at... No, that's a full stop ISO 12,800 on the wide. And if I zoomed in on that one closer to my face like this, I'd have to be at ISO 25,600, which it doesn't even do. So cool. Uh, we're going to go give away some blizzards, I think. I'm watching Instagram TV. How is it? It's the same as everything else. Just vertical. Okay, I'm going to watch my car first. What? Yep. Uh, we Which could also do a little uh, slow motion sequence That's here loud. in the car wash. It's loud? Yeah. Did you hear that? Your lens. Yeah, it clicks away. It's supposed to be ultra quiet. And I wouldn't want to know what their loud one would be. I'm going to say, I, they shouldn't use the word ultra when it's just like not. Oh, how it feels. Oh, feels so real. All the emotions flood like the ocean Oh, how that feels I've actually figured out why people vlog with such big gigantic full frame rigs like the 1DX Mark II etc because you feel like you are better than every other person in the world when you're vlogging with a camera this big. Yeah, it's like you're compensating for something. No, no, no. It's just like it's it's big and you feel kind of awesome and it looks good. All right, why are we at Dairy Queen? Well, you wanted to do something, and it's mini blizzard day. 99 cents for a mini blizzard. They're usually like four bucks. So a deal. I'm going to get three for myself, and then I'm going to give away three. To who? Whoever wants them. What do you mean whoever wants them? Well, if you're watching this on Instagram TV right now. You're not. Can I have seven Oreo mini blizzards? They're going to be so annoyed at you, Greg. What? I mean, why? They gotta make seven mini blizzards? Don't put the sale on if you know if you don't know I'm coming. It's not my fault. Hello, blizzard day. Yeah. So a blizzard 
your American audience is it's like ice cream mixed with stuff. Sorry, you don't think they have blizzards in the States? Missouri Queen, Canadian, I thought. All right, question of the day. These mini blizzards are like 350 and a large is like five bucks, and you get like six times as much. If this was all you really wanted or needed, are you the kind of person who was like, no, I'll stick with that? Or are you the kind of person who are like, yo, for like a dollar and a bit more, I can get six times as much, I'm getting six times as much, even though you don't need it? That's the question. The other thing I'm asking is because we're driving, we can actually see that image stabilization on this seems to be working pretty well, but I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, off. All right, so image stabilization is off, and I'm curious to see here, as I'm trying to hold it while we're driving, if the bouncing and the different thing, the thing is we're pretty wide, so maybe it's not as noticeable, just my microphone might hit the roof a little bit. I'll do a walking and talking test of this afterwards, but let's turn it back on. And, yeah, I don't know, it just seems like it's, Tough to tell. Tough to tell on a little monitor. Maybe it works. Hi, Justin's channel. I have one blizzard. You have six. Yeah, but I'm not eating What's any of wrong them. with you? I'm not eating any of them because I have self-control. You're going to let them melt. You still got them for yourself. No, you ordered seven. The camera clearly showed. Right. You guys, though, can we talk about how awesome this shot looks where, like, this is in focus and these are, like, blurred right out? Come on. Makes everything... Just everything looks so cool on this. I like it. Well, I, I don't know about the double chin though, you guys. <laughs> uh, get the camera up. We have blizzards. Blizzard. It's blizzard day. Is it? Yeah. What does that mean? Wow. It means mini blizzards are a dollar. Oh, wow. That's what we thought Thanks. of you guys. How are you doing? We're just testing our new camera. So You're welcome. Camera. Sorry to be weird about that. No, okay. just drive around making the days for yeah. people. Well, he's like, I, I got to test with this lens. So we're like, let's just go buy blizzards and make people's days. Oh, wow. How nice. And, and did... then they called the strangers and said they wouldn't yeah. accept it from strangers. Oh, no, they called the cops. They, no? they were going to, I think. Oh. Yeah. Well, I knew. Make someone's day with that one. Oh, that's so nice. Thanks. Hey. hey. Say hi to the new lens. Justin wanted, new lens. He wanted to test out his new lens. So yeah, we bought blizzards. Because that's what you do. We bought Blizzard. Yeah. All right. Mission accomplished. Now, uh, we need to do a walk and talk test to you see know what, what. You know what I hate? What? Those ladies totally thought we were hitting on them. Oh, yeah. We're just trying to be nice. What? What's wrong with the world? Well, because lots of creepy guys go and hit on good looking girls. I didn't say they were good looking. I said they were girls. Yeah, but they were good looking. That's fine. You don't have to be weird about it. Well, you're acting. So you're making me uncomfortable. Nice. All right. Now time for the walk and talk test while we talk about some things here. So camera is definitely heavy. And what you lose, I would say, is some of that whip ability, which I have with the other camera, which is when I'm talking with Greg and I, like, especially like in a vehicle, being able to kind of like throw it here and there and everywhere. That part is actually pretty nice. And you lose a little bit of something with that. But from what I'm seeing on the screen, obviously, like you're cinematic feel and the optical nature of it is just insane because you're really blurring backgrounds and stuff looks super duper cool now this thing is absolutely gigantic ginormous massive crazy but it's kind of awesome last thing we'll test here is i've got the image stabilization on i'm going to turn it off and keep walking i think i'm at the widest setting here and you know We'll see if that makes much of a difference. 6D Mark II is, I would say, in some ways overpriced for what it is. Because there's no 4K, there's no 120 frames per second. Some things that a lot of other cameras have. But if you need just like high quality cinematic vlogging, it's pretty special. Hey, do we notice a difference with that image stabilization off versus on right now? Let's turn it back on and go for our uh, final thoughts. Anyway, the thing I still don't know is whether the autofocus in this thing is like stupid noisy or not. I won't really know that until I listen to the footage. You guys probably already know that, but bleh, bleh. I kind of like it. It's heavy though, although I don't work out and this would be a good way to force myself to work out is to be able to do this, but it's not unmanageable. Again, we're talking about five pounds, which something <sighs> anyway. Back to the studio. Sorry, I have no idea why I whipped out of that. Um, because I just can't finish a whip. Anyway, 
I've had some time to look at the footage, to listen to the audio, to kind of go through and digest this actually over. It's it's a number of hours later. And again, I apologize. That wasn't the most in-depth or most exciting vlog. I just wanted to put it in some kind of real-world situation. I only had about you know, an hour and a half or two hours to be able to do that. And so, I, you know, I hope at least the context of that was helpful. But here's my thoughts after having used this. And again, the, the big caveat here is if you can vlog without a selfie screen, which I hate, but if you can do that, then a Sony a7 III, light years ahead. Like so many options. If you don't care about super fast autofocus then a gh5 or a gh5s you know could be cool too you're not going to be able to blur that background in the same way but you know there are other options but again for what i've been looking for which is 1080p quality cinematic flip out screen microphone input stabilization great autofocus it's it's really really interesting so let's go through just some of the notes i made so was it cinematic and i have to say absolutely yes Almost unlike anything I've ever vlogged with, other than when I've done a bit with the 16 millimeter f1.4 on my Sony, it, it felt similar. Like if, you know, we go back to the scene of me walking and talking, just going down the street, how the background is just bokeh, uh, an endless bath of bokeh, of however you want to say it. It is so creamy back there, and you are literally just locked in on my face, and everything else falls away and is way less distracting, and it feels cool, as well as, you know, the shots of the blizzards, when you're seeing those, like, so blurred out, or where I'm shooting past Greg's face, and you're you're seeing other people, and he is just, like, completely, like, blown out. Uh, that is cool to me, and that was the effect that I was after. So, absolutely check that box. Low light capabilities. It is definitely much better at low light than the M50 is. Just, I mean, no question. Some of that is, I mean, you got a much bigger sensor. And again, where you're going to even get more benefits are the fact that this lens combo lets in a good chunk more light. Twice as much light on the wide end, four times as much uh, on the, you know, zoomed in end. So, yeah, that that part would be much more helpful when you get into dodgy light situations. So, okay. Stability-wise... I don't know how you guys felt, but for me, I felt like I could absolutely notice the difference when that vibration control came off of. It was smooth. It doesn't mean that it, it's like a gimbal, like it takes all that out, but all those like little micro jitters that can sometimes, you know, mess up the footage, uh, you know, and it, when it plays into a little bit of rolling shutter, like that is just kind of gone as well as like the handheld cinematic B-roll. You know, I, I restrained myself because Final Cut Pro 10 has this easy button you can check for stabilization that makes it so much more stable. I didn't check that button. That would completely smooth out basically everything. But with that extra stabilization, your handheld shots are are better. And I didn't have the digital IS on, which would also stabilize it a little bit more, giving up a little bit of width. But you know, that part in it is cool. I have a feeling that the motor and the stabilization in that would be a bit of um, a battery drain, but, you know, didn't get into testing that so much. Let's talk a bit about the focusing of it. And when the camera knew where a face was, it worked great, but it is not as forgiving. You know, when you're at 2.8 on a full frame, there isn't a whole lot that is in focus. And so the camera is working a little bit harder. And I didn't go through all the settings of you can, I believe on this camera, change the speed of the focusing and how quickly it's tracking, get a little bit more control of that. Maybe it doesn't work with this lens. I don't know, I haven't like looked into that. Um, but what I found was the 60 Mark II is maybe not quite as good as the M50 of like switching between faces. Like I felt like there were times where I was on my face and I tried to show Greg's face and it was still trying to track my face even though I was out of frame. Now again, I would like to play and do a little bit more time with the focusing on this, but at least it's got that touch screen and you'll see me doing that a few times, just tapping on the screen of what I want it to focus on. Uh, whereas the M50 is a lot more forgiving because, well, there's way more stuff in focus because you know, you're at F4 on a crop sensor, whereas this is 2.8 on a full frame. That's just like two, you know, two different leagues. So focusing though, when it knew what I wanted it to track, it did a very, very good job. It's not like immediate, immediate, but you know, very quick and very smooth because dual pixel is so good. And what I was happy about was I put on, you know, headphones to try and listen for autofocus noise coming from the motor. And 
I, I wasn't hearing it. Now, the side note is the 6D, the preamp in this, which is basically, you know, you plug a microphone in and you, you heard the, the hiss, I'm sure, is like super noisy. Now, this microphone doesn't have a battery built into it. So if you were gonna use the 6D Mark II, I would say don't use a passive microphone like the Rode Video Micro. You're probably gonna wanna get a, you know, a video mic or Video Mic Pro or Pro Plus, something that has a built-in battery so the camera preamp isn't having to work as hard. I assume it would be way less noisy. That'd be something that I'd be investing in if, if I decided, which who knows, to keep this combo. What else, handling? Okay, so this is the big thing because if this thing was the size of this M50, I would, I would just buy it tomorrow. Like I just absolutely would, but when you're talking about going from, you know, maybe like, two pounds to, to five pounds, and not even so much the weight. Even if this thing weighed what it did and it was in this size, I would buy it tomorrow. But like whipping this thing around is like, you you gotta be, you gotta be on your toes and you certainly don't want a tripod any smaller than the 5K or if you can still pick up this old uh, Focus ball head X combo, uh, great combo too. But like it is, serious business, which in some ways, yeah, like you, you're like, we'll go into some places sometimes when we're vlogging and we've got this and people think like we're a joke, which I'm not denying that maybe we are a joke, but if you show up with this, instant credibility, but also uh, you're a lot more incognito here. You, people, people are going to notice when you've got this absolutely massive rig with you. And so that's really the, the debate in my head right now is, I love the way that this turned out. Like, I actually, like, I I loved it. I look at it and I go, hmm, that is what I want. I want my stuff to look like that. Um, I'd want to play around with the camera a little bit more, learn a little bit more. It's a bit more work in, like, you're kind of having to manage that focusing a little bit more. So, I, you know, I maybe don't love that part, but the trade-off for the way it looks, I'm just like, oh, yes, please. But... It's really the size and the weight, and you can't put a filter on it because the glass doesn't take that, and so you'd have to be like careful even where you're putting it down and doing different things. I like, I'd be a lot more fearful because the price is another factor: twenty-seven hundred dollars U.S. for the combo. So if you're a casual vlogger, there's no way you're spending that kind of money. Um, but if you're, you know, full-time content creator you know, that's that's a reasonable investment or you're doing some things professionally. Um, the other cool part about this is you now have a full frame camera for taking photos, which, you know, I haven't had for years and I've, I've missed. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of a nice combo and you've got a 15 to 30 millimeter f2.8 lens, which is cool for photos too. Maybe you grab a 50 millimeter, even 1.8 STM, for like 150-ish dollars, throw on the digital IS, and now you've got like a chunk more range and something that almost fits in your pocket. It's like, you know, there's there's some neat options that you're able to play around with, but yeah, it's certainly not for the faint of heart. Um, I was feeling like for the hour afterwards, I'm like, man, my arms are tired because it's a lot more, but if you did it on regular, you would you would get used to it. Um, but you, you have to be more careful with it because it's, it's heavier, you wanna make sure you got the legs right or it's gonna fall over, um, but it also is probably built a little bit more like a tank uh, than maybe a cheap camera, but a little less wear and tear because this one's so light and this one isn't. So, would I buy it? Would I actually put it in my arsenal? You know what, I don't know. Like, part of me was like, nah, there's no way. This'll just be like a fun video, I'll do this and then, you know, I'll, I'll move on. Uh, I think depending on the situation and what we were filming, I would like I would actually kind of like to have both because there are times where that small little run and gun is absolutely the way to go. But I think for certain vlogs where I know, you know, it'll be a little bit compromised or I know that I have the space and time and a, and a little bit more room to be able to work with this thing, the results I feel like are just like tremendous, like kind of next level stuff. And the crazy thing is, Nobody, nobody makes an image stabilized f2.8 ultra wide angle lens. And I think that is crazy. Like that, and I guess I get it because it, like it's big and it's hefty. But on the other hand, if you get into any of the like serious ultra wide angle lens, like the Canon 11 to 
is it 20 or 22? I don't remember what that is. Or any of the like 12 to 24, uh, even Tokina 16 to 28, those lenses all get into the similar like size weight territory as opposed to the 16 to 35 millimeters, which are a little bit more compact. And again, you can do F4 image stabilized, it's smaller, but um, you know, half as much light and you're not hitting the background quite as hard. So cool combo. I'm definitely gonna be thinking about it. And part of me, what kills me is, I have the Sony a6500 that right now gets left on the tripod and only meant for these kind of videos, but you know, shoots 4K, shoots 120 frames per second, uh, you know, two things that this doesn't, but uh, I just like, I don't use it a ton. So part of me is like, maybe I just sell that and put that towards getting a combo like this. Who knows? Uh, I, I just, again, Sony, flip out screen. Just please, flip out screen. Is it so hard? Is it so hard? Anyway, Thank you to Don's Photo uh, for lending this to me. They didn't, they didn't pay me. They're not, they're not paying me. They just let me borrow it. Uh, side note, though, if you're in Canada, Western Canada, you're thinking about a 60 Mark II. Part of the reason I could only have it for such a short period of time was this is the only one they have because they go through them like water. And right now, I think you get like a $200 kit or something with it. You get the Canon bag, you get an extra battery, and you get the comfort strap just included with it. And anyway, in Canada, this is like $2,099, so... Oh, <sighs> decisions, decisions. Always love to hear from you guys what you think. Let me know in the comments. What did you think about the camera? Do you think it was neat? Did you hate it? Would you do this combo? Do you hate Canon? And again, I don't I don't care about brand names. I've used Sony, I've used Panasonic, I use Canon. Like I, I don't care about the name. It's just like this is the combo that gives me the things that I want right now. And I wish somebody else would do it too, but whatever. I'm Justin Rivas. Thank you guys for watching.